And welcome back to the preview of the Dolphins' second ever season. Now, if you're a Dolphins fan and you haven't seen me do the other teams and that sort of thing, basically what we do is we're going to talk about like the changes in the squad, the ins and the outs, some question marks have around the squad, some exciting things, and then highlight over the best 17 for the Dolphins and where I think they're going to finish around like the table in 2024. So honestly, let's just get straight into it and talk about the ins for the Dolphins in 2024. Yeah, they're, look, they're pretty handy. So we'll start with Jake Avarillo, Herbie Farnworth, Tom Flegler, and Oren Keeley. So Jake Avarillo, I think that's a really, really savvy signing. Um, was all, like, really good at the Bulldogs. And I think under Wayne Bennett and also Christian Wolf, which we'll talk about a little bit later, um, I think like Jake Avarillo will honestly excel and be one of the premier centers in the competition in due course. Maybe not just this season, but I think over time, absolutely. And then Herbie Farnworth, who is one of the premier centers in the competition, is a great get. Uh, I think like you also weaken the Broncos squad as well, which is like a good sign, like a good thing for the Dolphins and the rest of the competition as well. And the next signing, Tom Flegler, also does that too. Good signing, um, obviously got an aging four pack, so I think bringing in Tom Flegler for the long term is a good option there. And then Oren Keeley, we've seen him play one game for the Knights. Um, he's a promising young second rower, and again, same thing with Flegler, he's young. Um, and he's sort of looking as like the next generation of forwards coming throughout the Dolphins. Um, so I, I, honestly, overall, I'd give, actually, wait, we'll, we'll talk about the outs first here. Uh, so the outs, Herman, SASA, um, Farmer Silly, and Oliver Gilda are no longer at the Dolphins. And I think like all three of those players last year were predominantly reserve graders, didn't make a massive impact in the NRL. So I think like overall, the recruitment for the Dolphins has to be an A+. Plus. You strengthen your, like, your squad in the uh, weaker areas and you also let go of some like dead rubber. So I think overall, you have to, like it's preseason, but I think you have to say that that is an A+, plus for recruitment for the Dolphins. Um, there are some question marks I have around the squad. How do they balance out an aging four-pack with the youngsters coming through? Especially if they're looking towards finals football for this season, like for example, Oren Keeley, like you want to give him more like in Mason Teague and that sort of thing, like give them 10, 20 minutes a game, but like if towards the back end of the season, that might not be the best option because you're looking to win those really tight, brutal games and they're just not up to the experience of that just yet. But yeah, I'm looking, we're talking about Wayne Bennett here, super coach, um, although history tells us he doesn't leave his clubs in the best position. The Dragons might have made the finals twice, I think, since he left. The Knights were terrible for ages, but that's not entirely Wayne Bennett's fault and Souths weren't great um, straight after he left. Uh, but yeah, look, I don't know. I think you look at it and Kafusi will probably stay around after this season. Jesse Bromwich probably won't. And because of that, Kenny Bromwich might not either, but I'm sure they'll, they'll balance it out. So I brushed over the idea before, but this other question mark I've got for the, like, uh, the Dolphins is, does Christian Wolf have more of an impact on how the team plays this season? So obviously he's taking over after next season. So uh, yeah, 2024 will be Wayne Bennett's last as head coach, at least at the Dolphins. He might take more of like a backroom sort of role. But yeah, Christian Wolf, we've seen him coach Tonga, I believe, and have some success there. He's a, from all reports, he's quite a good coach, good man manager, um, that sort of thing. But moving forward, like, does he sort of have some input into how the season, like, the team plays this season, so he can see uh, what players are good for his system, what players need a bit of adjustment, like players he might look to move on, bring in, whatnot. Um, I don't think they will do that. I think I'll just say it's Wayne Bennett's team, and that's how it's going to play this season. But I also feel like they all work together. A little bit more than sort of most other coaches in terms of the way the team plays so that it's, it's more seamless when Christian Wolf comes in as a head coach in 2025 um, and yeah as like the other question mark I have here is like what does that Christian Wolf team look like but I guess for now that is a question for beyond this season um, but some exciting things for the Dolphins you got a new look back line key air signings in the right areas so that, um, last season, the center position was probably one of the ones that was up for debate a little bit. Like, you had the hammer up and playing in center, and then you put Nick Arima at a fullback, and it didn't work out probably the way that they wanted it to. Um, but this season, you have Herbie and Avarillo in the centers, but you could also move the hammer there. Like I said before, you've brought in some really quite good forwards, especially Tom Flegler, the experience. He's played for Australia, he's played for Queensland, that sort of thing, to come in and bolster that four pack. Um, and it's like the exciting thing as well, I think, for Dolphins fan is. The big question mark everyone had over the Dolphins uh, just in, since their inception and towards the last season, they couldn't land big names over the line. They could not, They for the life of them, they could not get a marquee signing. Um, and they have this season. They brought in Herbie Farmworth, Tom Flegler, and Jake Avarillo. 
and all three of those guys are household names and like bolster their squad tremendously, bring in a lot more eyes. Like Herbie Farmer is one of the most followed Instagram, like NRL players on Instagram. So like little things like that, great for marketing, great for getting eyes around the club. So I think overall, like, the Dolphins are definitely looking up and the way that they've started their NRL life is really, really good. And I think it's going to be, uh, we're, going to, we're going to see the fruits of this labor in five or six years time. But yeah, we'll move on now to the best 17 for the Dolphins start at the back. I do have the hammer there. I think he played his best football there last season. Yes, he can play center. We've seen him do that in origin and whatnot, but I think at club football, his best best position is fullback, uh, especially now that you've got a couple of good dynamic centers there. Move on to the wing. One of them has to be Jermaine Osako. Like That just goes without saying. The club's top try scorer and top point scorer after one season, obviously, but under Wayne Bennett, he just plays a different style of football. He was so, so good last season. I want, like, I'd like to see how he goes. Again, he's see if he can build off that. Uh, and then you've got in the centers, Herbie Farmworth and Jake Avarillo. Like, as I said, like, I think they just sort of pick themselves. Yes, you've obviously got um, like Valence Tafade there, but I don't think he's really pushing for a spot anytime soon, uh, if I'm completely honest. And then the other wing spot, there's a couple options there. You've got Tessie New, Edric Lee. But from all reports, this guy has uh, sort of won the jersey so far, barring trial form. Uh, for round one, and that is Jack Bostock. So I put him there in the best 17. Really tall, rangy kind of guy. Um, we'll see how he goes uh, this season. His NRL performances haven't been super impressive. Kills it when he plays cup and that sort of thing. Was really good in the trials last season. Great for New South Wales 19s, Blues in 2022. But yeah, I think he just needs a bit more extra confidence that he can do it at the NRL level, and then we'll watch him flourish. In the halves, you've got Cody Nicarima floating around there, but I'm not going to have him in my halves just yet. I do have Isaiah Katoa as well as Sean O'Sullivan. So the reason I've gone for the two ex-Penrith boys is that I think Sean O'Sullivan, like when the Dolphins had Sean O'Sullivan there, they looked a lot better team. And I think Isaiah Katoa needs to be playing in a role because he is the future of that club. He could be there for the next 10 years as that guy if they allow him to be there and flourish and develop his game. Uh, we'll move on into the full pack now. Obviously, one starting front rower is going to be uh, Tom Flegler, the hooker, Jerry Marshall King, that team looks a thousand times better when he's there. Uh, Jesse Bromwich is the other starting front rower and the captain. Then into the second row, he's carrying a bit of an injury cloud going into this season, but um, Lemuelu for sure is one of the starting second rowers. He was phenomenal towards the back end of that, um, the 2023 season. He was really, really good. Uh, scored like a bucket load of tries out of nowhere, sort of, like seemingly anyway. Obviously, he probably would have been putting a lot of work in behind the scenes, but yeah, Lemuelu fantastic player other one is uh finn diesel for felice kafusi absolutely whacking blokes to start the season for the dolphins there bit of a leader in terms of just his actions and like helping these other young guys come through 13 tom gilbert unfortunately he suffered an injury as well last season at the dolphins they got plagued with injury and suspension all through last year which was quite unfortunate because they started the season really really well uh so yeah tom gilbert at the 13 then at 14 is where I've got Cody Nicarima. I think he could, could he could come on and play a bit of dummy half, that sort of thing, a bit of a floating role, or just however Wayne Bennett wants to play him. Like, I think he's a great player, and he needs to be in there somewhere, but I, yeah, look, I don't think the center experiment worked last season. I don't think he's their best option at fullback, especially considering the new signings. So yeah, for me, Cody Nicarima, the best spot I see for him is 14. If they decide to play him in the halves, and I think Isaiah Katoa should drop to Queensland Cup so he can be playing 80 minutes as a half rather than 15 minutes as a hooker in NRL for his development, if that makes sense. Um, and then the other guys got on the bench, you've got Kenny Bromwich coming on in the middle and as well as Jared Wallace. I think those guys provide a bit more, like a bit of a punch off the bench. You could have Josh Kerr in there as well um, as like another forward there. I think he will play quite good under Wayne Bennett after a full preseason. Obviously, he loved him there. They got the Queensland Spirit Award in the 2020 Origin Camp, and this is a guy that, like, sort of, his name's never really been floated for Origin. Uh, he's not really that kind of player as uh, so far in his career. I think if he gets rid of, like, the errors and whatnot in his game, Josh Kirk could develop to be quite a good player. Um, but, yeah, and then my 17, I've got Ray Stone. Another guy I feel like you sort of have to have in there. Can cover a lot of positions, dummy half, second row, uh, lock. Like, he can be, like, your uh, forward utility, whereas Cody Nicarima is like your back utility, I guess, if they want to go that way. But yeah, you've also got you guys like Oren Keeley. I feel like there's definitely someone else um, at the Dolphins I'm forgetting. I'll quickly look at their squad. Um, but yeah, I think uh, when you look at Ray Stone, like <laughs> they said that in the uh, Dolphins documentaries, like you wish you could have 17 Ray Stones. He's such a good player. His work ethic is phenomenal. Harrison Graham could get a shout there. Uh, who else we got looking at the squad? Um... Anthony Milford, I don't know where... Oh, that's who it is. Mark Nichols. Um, he could definitely get another bench spot as well. That's, sort of, that's the good thing about the Dolphins is this season, they've got a lot of competition for spots. Like, 
Mark Nichols, I think he's probably one of um, Wayne Bennett's more favourite players, so he'll probably honestly get a bench spot. Mason Teague is a shout for a bench spot as well. Valence Tafade could try and get his name back, like his work his way back in there. Max Plath, another dummy half that um, could be a shout for some NRL minutes this season. So they've definitely got the squad depth there, uh, the Dolphins, this season, as opposed to last year to cover those injuries and suspensions like they got last year. Hopefully, fingers crossed it doesn't happen for them in 2024. But yeah, that's what I mean. Like looking at their squad from last season to this year, like they started the year really well. We're in the top eight for a fair while and then dropped off just when, I mean, things happened. Like it just, unfortunately, sometimes over the course of an NRL season, it does happen. Being a new club, they hadn't really um, laid the foundations for how to push through a full season. So, I do think this season that the Dolphins are a smoky for the top eight. Well, not even a smoky, really. Like I think the predicted finish is anywhere between like 6th and 10th. I think they'll be there or thereabouts. It's just going to be dependent on how well everyone else plays because the whole, pretty much apart from like the Dragons and I mean like apart from and the, the top clubs like Penrith and Broncos, um, everyone's got better. So... Like, we saw how close it was for those last couple of spots in the top eight last season. This season's going to be even worse. Um, so, yeah, for me, I think the Dolphins will definitely be very, very competitive and no one's going to be taking them very lightly in 2024. But let me know how you think they're going to go. Um, for me, I would actually love to see the Dolphins play some finals football in their second year, uh, in their last season under Wayne Bennett. So, yeah, let me know how you think the Dolphins are going to go. If you made it this far, make sure you like and subscribe to the video uh, for more footy content and we'll see you next time.